Hey guys, today we are going to go over some tips and advice over the strong and weak acid upon titration lab. And hopefully these tips and advice will help you get an A on your post lab and your quiz. So in lecture class, you should have learned the equations and reaction when you add a strong acid to a strong base or a weak acid with a strong base. So here's just a brief or general overview of what we will be doing in lab today. We'll be using nitric acid as our strong acid and we'll be tritrating that with sodium hydroxide or a strong base. So we can also label this as H3O plus or hydronium plus hydroxide. Which will completely react to form two water molecules. We'll also have formic acid, and we'll be tritrating that with sodium hydroxide, our strong base. And we can also put this as a weak acid plus the strong base. Which will completely react to form conjugate weak base plus water. Okay guys, so first of all, before starting the experiment, of course you want to have closed toe shoes and your safety goggles and your latex gloves on because you'll be dealing with some nitric acid and sodium hydroxide which are strong acid and strong base and highly concentrated. So first of all you have to prime your burette with your sodium hydroxide. Priming your burette is essential because you want to make sure that you are titrating with the same concentration of your solution. Your titrant is also the NaOH in the burette. And this is the best setup that you should do for the experiment so that you won't accidentally break anything. And we have two different pH monitors. And this one, you have to hit the measure button and the power button. That's the only two buttons that you'll be dealing with power and measure. You don't want to hit anything else or it won't be calibrated. But for this one, it constantly measures your pH, so all you have to do is clean your pH probe with some deionized water and our Kim wipes. Okay guys, so before you start your actual experiment, you want to calculate your theoretical volume of chitrate that you need to add to your solution so that you can do a quick test run to see how much base you'll need to add for the reaction to reach its equivalence point. Usually the theoretical volume will be 1 to 2 milliliters off from the actual amount that you'll be using as a titrant in lab. Once you have your test run, you can know exactly where you will need to slow down to ensure that you will have good data points for your pH curve. And it is essential to have accurate data from lab because we will be using that information to create our pH curve. Okay guys, insert the pH meter probe gently into the beaker and be extra careful not to break the probe. Replacement costs $40. Just notice when you're doing your experiment, you'll have a magnetic stir bar in your beaker and it's very small, so make sure you don't accidentally discard it along your waist. The magnetic stir bar should be in the middle of the beaker and you should turn on the stir setting to the lowest possible setting. Record to the nearest hundredths place accurately on your burette. And also, do not turn on the heat setting because you do not want to boil your solution. Once you have finished your experiment, pour your waste into the non-halogenated waste container. And here's an example of a good pH curve. Good luck guys with your experiment and I wish you the best in your lecture and lab.